Right, lovers, uh, yeah, so today I've got this thing for you, and it's this lovely uh, Speedo, and it kind of works, and it kind of looks nice, and, you know, uh, I'll show you a render of it. But what I want to show you guys is all these bits. And I kind of want to see them sort of exploded. And the pose morph is a perfect way of just using a couple of sliders to bam. And uh, so here's how I do it. Now pose morphs are primarily, well they're designed for use with characters so that you can literally just go in and and it's exactly the same idea as morph targets and morph shapes in Maya, exactly the same. So the thing is, is that what we're really doing is that we're going in, we're grabbing a load of, we're grabbing a load of points and setting those in memory and then just literally morph in between them. Now I've got the sculpting layout and here I've got lovely Lisa and uh, well you know um, let's just say Fred's got her up the duff so if we just get an inflating kind of thing let's do that I think that'll obviously work so let's go tags character pose morph let's not mess about go pose morph underscore preggers like that uh, points I think that's all we need to do now and so yeah uh, another thing we can do is could probably turn on symmetry, but for the sake of demonstration, I don't actually give a shit. So, yeah, you've got the option to mask stuff off just by selecting it. So if you go middle mouse, boom, like that, and you're like, oh no, don't want the arm, like that. Right, like this. And then if I inflate that, then it'll only inflate my belly section, which is lovely. Let's, let's get a nice and up the doof. Boop, 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 boop. I would do this Fred, uh, with Fred in the name of, you know, gender parity and stuff, but, uh, yeah, this is just how my juvenile mind works. I'm sorry, girls. That's a big old, maybe it's twins, who knows. Okay, so go back to the pose morph, and that's really it. So I want to just give this a name for espresso's sake, so go, uh, bulge. Like that, and then just hit advance, uh, animate, and so that's stored into memory now, which is uh, pretty fun. Yay! Ah, yeah, I know. Scary, especially if you're a male around thirty. So here's the bit you've been waiting so patiently for. Hopefully, on YouTube, you just clicked the link. This is how you apply a pose morph to an object. Yeah. Alright, so let's say we want this hand here in the middle. This uh, this speedo hand thing. Well, I know that that's here. And uh, luckily I don't have a pose morph already on it. Let's say I want all of these parts to split apart a certain amount. Let's say I start with a hand. I go to character. And I go to pose morph. And then, it's quite simple, I click on position, and I go, yeah, position out, like that. Make sure you name it, because you've got to do a lot of espresso later. So, speed hand, go back to the tag, and then we just go, like that, and then hit animate. Oh, yes, it is that simple. But let's say we want to add some rotation on one at the same time. So we've got our wheel here. Let's just pop on a pose morph. And on this one, we're going to go, uh, yeah, whatever, pause rock. So let's just go position, back to basic, go rotation as well. And now that pose is going to store both position and rotation in the same memory slot. So, da da da. Mm -mm -mm, like so, hit animate. 
Now, that's great and stuff, but half the time I don't know what I'm doing, so I always forget. So let's just say I've done it on this one. So uh, I add the pose just on position alone. And on this, I just drag that out. And then I go to animate. Now I remember that I've done the other one with a bit of rotation. And I think, oh, well, all right, there's an edit button. I'll just go in and add some rotation, right? So it should have actually stored that in its own slot, just the position one. So if you try and add rotation, sometimes it doesn't work. So let's just see if this works, just to prove how silly I am. So do 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 like that. And now we go to animate. And this time it's added it. But given the way that we're animating using sliders, you can just hit this button here, add pose, add the rotation in separately, and then you only need to link up one more node in Espresso, it's easy. I'm gonna go through how to just quickly add a use data, like my little technique for this. So, uh, let's just select this Mr. Hand here, and he hasn't got a pose morph on him, so let's just add one really quickly position, there we go, like that. I didn't really want to do that. I wanted to go along the Z, like that, and hit animate. So we've got this, and then if I go in here, I'll just go um, hand, just for the sake of it, animate. Okay, now I will add some user data wherever appropriate, probably on speedos best, so add user data. Add a group first, I'm going to call that uh, face group, whatevs, uh, uh, dials, like that. Uh, drag it out, drag data under it, data is going to be hand, yeah, whatevs and then float slider and that's it you're done and then we go into say we've got a bit of espresso on this just for the sake of argument we go to speedo drag that down here get our hand user data so that's in there and then we want it to drive mr hand here so let's get him in speed hand and tag properties Pose zero strength. Now if I wanted to drive any other, uh, I don't think I've got another pose morph in the thing, but if I want it to drive anything else, I can just have the same user data driving as many different pose morphs as I want. So to better illustrate how Range Mapper can do all this lovely stuff, like mixing without using mix nodes, maths without doing maths nodes, all this lovely stuff, I'll show you. I've got the angle three, and this isn't right. I want all these elements to come together down here, and then for them to travel directly vertically up to join onto the end of that cog thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab Range Mapper, and I'll probably just uh, I'll probably just make this a lot bigger and duplicate it loads because I'm probably going to need a few. Okay, so my major thing is is that when I'm at a hundred percent, I want the elements to all be like they are now, but then I want them to be all together by about fifty percent, but still as low as they are now, and then to travel up in a group. So, the major first thing is that this one, uh, the, the axle, that needs to happen at the end, which is from 50 down to 0. So, go into my range mapper, open up. And literally, we want this to happen from 0.5 like there, so that's wrong, isn't it? Okay, no, it's right. 
don't want to waste anyone's time. God, <laughs> who's got time to waste? So. That's right. Then the next thing is that all of these need to do kind of the same thing, but just to move this along. So let's get this range mapper. Let's grab these two. And we need those to go like that pretty much, I think. Something like that. Oh, if you can't guess exact, go in here. See that? Now that's exact. Get rid of that delete it, that one's exact, there we go, we know that that's exact, so let's go to uh, axle 3 in, like that, so, get in there, and now we can use that same range mapper to power the other two, because we're doing the same, the same time offset. Now, I don't like the way that the white one and the red one travel together, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another range mapper. Let's get rid of those two. I'm going to do another range mapper just for the worm here, just for the worm's benefit. So not axle two, dumbass. Axle three, straight to the worm, and then that one I'm just going to go two, because distance equals time, same rate. So. Mm. I still don't like it. I kind of wish that it came from the other side of the screen. But I didn't do that with the pose morph. Doesn't matter, does it? We can actually just put a negative value in there. And it will go to the other side. So it's amazing. You can just, you know, you've got proper parametric animation. So you see how they intersect here? Well, I can just make that happen a bit sooner for the white one. So the white one is called gear. It's going into this range mapper. So let's go like 0.6. Now see what happens. Ah, yeah, I want it to actually happen later. Okay, 0 0.4. There we go. Now, and I want that to go later on as well. So now, Fum, 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 fum. Don't, uh. So now I've uh, I've rigged all my user data to all my pose moss. Just looking at the way that some of the stuff moves, I just kind of think, well, it's a bit too linear, isn't it? It's a bit too linear. Needs a, you know, need a bit of easing in. But it's really easy to do. So. If you uh, go in to your range mapper and you get your spline up, it's easier to do it in a separate window. Just grab them both, go to spline, and then just wiggle them down so they're flat. Beautiful. That's how you put a nice ease in. And that's your result. Get a bit of a nice fum 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 shing. Yeah, so that's that. <laughs> Finally, we're at the creative part of the uh, process. So we've got all of these set up, and uh, now if we hit play, we've got speed. So things are moving. If you have a look, that's moving too. It's got a lovely little wiggle on it. If we put it up to full speed ahead, odometer's going crazy fast, uh, all this stuff. Uh, you'll notice because of the pose data, I've got this worm gear spinning extremely fast, uh, which makes me think I will probably not animate that to go with, to, to start off with. So let's bring the speed all the way down. And yeah, so now it's just a case of animating, but this is a joy. Having all of our user data up here in this lovely thing, just means it's it's a piece of piss and it also means that your timeline is very very empty so we've got one two three four five six seven eight we've got you know we're gonna have probably about seven timeline tracks so let's have a look at animating this so first things first let's go for 10 15 frames 
then I think the first thing we want is the shell component. So let's hit in there and then like, oh God, uh, one second and a half maybe. So let's go around 40, something like that. And then bring that in. Bearing in mind, of course, that now that we've got this in the timeline, we can put it into a, uh, we can have it in F curves and look at that. So we can even put a nice ease on that as well. Which it just makes everything a lot more elegant. Gives it that little je ne sais what the fuck. Um so yeah, let's go in there and like that. Very nice. Now uh yeah it is the mouth noises are extremely important. Any animator will tell you that any animator worth a shit. Okay, so next is the wheels. So it makes sense. Uh, let's just like shove this all the way like, you know, into Coventry. And let's do the wheels. So let's just say we want a blah, 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 and that's going to be like a one and a half seconds, like kind of um, kind of thing. So that goes like that and then when that's there, the axles come in, so the axles overlap, and the axles come down to zero at that point. So let's see how that looks. Bit too much overlap there, so let's grab them and put them over. I like that. Okay, so let's grab these guys, throw them over here. Now we've got axle, yeah, so we go backwards with the axles because I think the wheels would look f better if they're first. And then I'm going to hide all of the other things that are floating around because I, f I just don't want them in the screen, basically. So, let's go back to frame zero, get axle three, and go back here and go thump, wow just like that so obviously that's going to happen after after our wheels so bring those back like that and then obviously axle two goes in here and zero there like that and then we go same here with input axle like that and then like that and then zero and then that and then shum 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 and then obviously we got our shell coming in there and the shell can take a bit longer because it's big and it's dominating everything so ah or we can have it going over the whole animation let's grab all of these bring them back down here and go And then, ah, I know what we can do. So, we can have these bits, yeah, okay. So as long as we can see those wheels, I want to start from say, let's say we get a camera in here and put a nice like wide lens on it, like fucking super wide. Uh, is that super wide? There we go, Brown. I don't want an 8mm sensor because that's just stupid. There we go. That's what I was after. So, let's have a look through our movie camera. It's very nice. Let's do that. Oh, yeah. Nice bit of wide angle. Isn't that great? So, got these. And let's just, like, roughly plumb in. What I tend to do is I, I'll, I'll keyframe the camera in positions and then I'll just do a nicer camera using those coordinates because um, like, yeah, because targets are better. Using camera targets is better for object oriented motion graphics in my opinion. So I'll just uh, turn off scale. Who needs to scale a camera? Turn off parameter and then turn on auto key and Hit the first key for the camera and say when that's there, I kind of want to be like 
here. And hopefully the lighting's not going to be too crazy because the, the lights don't animate, the lights don't change, so these shadows should be fairly consistent. So let's just see how that goes. Fum. And we can't really see enough there, so I think that is probably just a bit too far. There we go. So I want that keyframe there. So let's throw that back here. So by the time we're there, we're getting some interesting stuff. And sort of pause it. So let's copy drag that keyframe over to 78. And then by the time it's back around here, I'd like it to have done a bit of a sweep, but I think I'm asking the world, honestly. Like, there, kind of thing. So I'm going to need to put in a little keyframe just to make sure it moves around. So, and it looks like, oh no, we have animated everything, there we go. So, you can see my horrible square keyframes. And also, I mean, the whole thing needs to be so much slower. Because that's, that's a really nice resolve. So, I think we should still catch that resolve. Let's scale everything up to like 10 seconds. Like, I know I'm crazy, but... 9 or 10, and then I really, yeah, okay, so, I really want that camera to come in before that, before that shell component resolves, so let's bring that to 10. So, I've given the camera a lovely smooth path, just by getting the camera and dropping it into a tracer object, running the whole thing through, and then making that tracer object editable, and then you make it a bezier spline, make it super smooth, lovely and flowing. Then you add a camera target to the camera, to a new camera, and put a line spline on it, and you get this beautiful roller coaster effect, which is kind of what you want for object oriented uh motion graphics like you you like you just need this you can't have a kinky camera it just doesn't work you know because we've got a lot of smooth motion if you look like it makes sense having these counter rotating wheels as well so you know any kinks that you've got sort of here we've got a bit of a corner it's not really a kink so much as the camera target not moving so obviously i can just pop that a bit forward, put the focus away from those wheels once we get round a bit, but I like the way it resolves. That's pretty good, isn't it? Um, now, we're going to get daylight through the back of the odometer windows here, the little uh, the little dial windows. If we don't put in a back, which I can do, can't really be bothered now. But yeah, so basically, let's have a look-see, real-time. So it's not really as educational as I'd wanted it to be. Um, because, simply put, if you can see how these things are working, then it makes a lot of sense that... You see what I mean? So I think there might be room for cutaways then. You know, just have like, maybe a cutaway just of these bits coming together here. So, maybe, yeah, I quite like that. So maybe to get even closer in here, at about okay, so let's have that in. Uh, or maybe here. Yeah, that's cool. <clears throat> so the rest is that I just rendered it out with uh, double-sized mats for depth and motion vector out of Cinema 4D. Uh, for super sampling, you need to do that. For Frischluft and RSMB, you need to do that. 
Um, this file is available to download from Mediafire. Look at the link below the link and uh, subscribe please because otherwise I won't do this again. Cheers, bye.